look, we've got Kim in the house. I'm really excited. How are you? Good, thank you. How about yourself? I'm good. Just worked out. Just getting some cooled off here. <laughs> okay. Well, what do you got for me? I um, just wanted to say that I think what you're doing is very awesome, very cool, and I appreciate it all. And that's really all I have to say. I've well, really on, enjoyed I really mean, enjoyed let's, let's have a conversation about something. So pick a okay. topic and let's talk about it. Okay. So I joined Bumble today. I was married 28 years okay. and raised three kids, put them through college and um, have two grandbabies. Okay. And I've been out of the dating field for six years. I've been concentrating on myself and, you know, just getting the feel of being independent and taking care of myself for the last six years. And okay. now I'm just ready to get back in there. And your videos have helped me a lot. Well, yeah. I'm happy to hear that. Thank you so much for your earlier accolades or um, props. I appreciate that. So, Kim, you were married 28 years. And how long ago did it end? uh 2018 it started okay so it's been six years give or take okay yeah. and your your children are grown yes okay yes so you're ready to like i i'm assuming you have okay so here's a question do you have a short-term mating strategy or a long-term mating strategy absolutely long term i'm all in all in. okay <laughs> so now i now let me, I should have said, do you have a short-term desire or a long-term desire? So what I think you're saying is you have a long-term desire, meaning you want an all-in relationship. Okay, good. Now your strategy, you know, <laughs> some people have a, a short-term mating strategy. They just want something casual. They may in the back, maybe in their back of mind might go at it from a long-term perspective, but a lot of people enter in with a short-term strategy. They are not thinking of the end goal. So these men, for example, men in particular, let's just live in the moment, let's take it slow, let's not get too emotionally invested in one another, but they are more than happy to have physical intimacy with you and still oh, wanna take it slow emotionally. So that's oftentimes what you're experiencing or might experience. So I just yeah. wanna put that in your vortex for a second. When you have a long-term mating strategy, one of the first things you have to do is really know who you are. This includes knowing what your love attachment style, when I mentioned the book Attached by Amir Levine and Rachel Heller, is knowing your attachment style, knowing what triggers you in relationship, knowing what is your greatest fear in relationship. Do you mind sharing your age? Um, I am 53. I'll be 54 in December. I am not okay. afraid to share my age. I'm proud of my age. I've okay. earned it. And I love it. <laughs> okay. Excellent. So the yeah. reason why I brought up age for a moment is with as people age, they begin to start to have insecurities that they won't be considered desirable to the opposite sex, that they'll be rejected, or that men will continually want younger women. That's one Fear. Also, another fear women typically have centers around body image. That tends to be a number, like a top fear for women. Another top fear for women is making poor choice. Let me reframe that. Choosing the wrong man. <laughs> there is a fear of going down the rabbit hole with the wrong guy. So these are just examples of some fears they have. So knowing who you are, having the self-awareness both in your fear in the dating marketplace, but also inner fears. Now, okay. we're not going to unpack those today, but I just want to give you some ideas. Another thing I've observed within women is a lot of limiting beliefs and negative patterns. They have a propensity to choose men similar to one or both of their parents, oftentimes their father, who is possibly emotionally unavailable, and then they begin to have this belief system that men are emotionally unavailable. There's a whole range of women right now that are completely brainwashed into believing that every man is narcissistic and he's going to use you and gaslight you. These are all limiting beliefs because there are. it is raining great men out there. It is raining great men. I believe okay? that. I do. Well, good. So then the question becomes, you know, if, if, recognizing what type of wounds you might have had during childhood. 
What's interesting, the other day I just did a camp for Father's Day. And what I mean by camp is I got together collectively with a group of eight, seven people, myself included, making, making it eight. And we were exploring what was it like to be our father's son or daughter? How are we like our father? How are we uh, different from our parents? How, what could our, and most of us are parents, actually in all, in this group, almost everybody had lost all their parents except for one person. And the point I'm bringing this up is we've all had micro traumas experienced in childhood that have oftentimes gone, gone unresolved. It's one of the reasons why I recommend the book the Hoffman process. Have you looked into this? Because I talk about this frequently. I, I am getting ready to order a couple of your books that I okay. want. <laughs> well, everybody who's watching right now, the list of books is uh, in the show notes. The reason why I bring this up, Kim, is to be relationship ready, mm-hmm. is to know thyself. It's to know what are my triggers? What maybe sets me off? So for example, I'll give you one of my triggers. I'm really good at responsive communication. In other words, particularly text message. When people Uh take a long time to text me back, my heightened (laughs) sense of of anxiety gets increased because I think something is wrong. Now, this happens to be my trigger. I'm aware of my trigger. And because of that, I I have to manage my my, um, emotional regulation system, my my emotions to not get go down that rabbit hole of anxiety. But the thing is, I, I've also observed most humans have poor relationship skills. They don't really have good relationship skills. Um, women think they're all good communicators. I got to tell you, women are good at vomiting feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Who are not? I, I, I know that from my first marriage, I learned that I should have communicated better. I mean, I'm not in marriage. Um, it takes so much give and take. And I've learned that, you know, when you first get split up, it's kind of like you kind of tend to grieve a little bit. And then you go into this. Was it my fault? Was it his fault? It was yeah. both. It takes two people, two people, yeah. not just one. And oh, I want to interrupt. Sorry for interrupting you, but I have to acknowledge this for everyone. Taking ownership for your part of the ending of the relationship is a critically important piece. Taking ownership. You know, so few people uh, take ownership. I have to write something down because I'm making a note of the ending. That is such a critically important piece of the puzzle when you can take ownership. So, so Kim, when you're sitting across the table, you're talking to a man. So, you know, why did you get divorced from your wife? You know, you're asking this question and he starts saying, oh my God, she was a cheater. She was a bad person. She was an alcoholic, blah, 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 blah. That, by the way, that's a big, gigantic red flag. Absolutely. A man or woman cannot take ownership of their part. And I got to tell you, I talk to women all day long. I mean, I've I've dated so many women. It seems like every woman I've dated has dated every narcissist on the planet. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So the other thing it's important to know is what is your must haves and your deal breakers? Like know what you really want out of a relationship. I, I do, and I really soul search this deeply. I don't want the uh, macho do. I want somebody that's in in tune with their feminine energy. I don't like this male female. I mean, I know men are raised that way, and women sure. are raised a certain way, but I want them to be in tune with being able to be a goofball, being able to have fun, being able to be there through the sick and good times, because that's the kind of person that I am. And that's what I'm looking for. You know, so, I'm not. But, gonna... I'm Go sorry. Uh, so you, you, you described kind of an esoteric thing when I'm talking about really knowing what you want. This is really about understanding yourself and who's compatible with you. Oh, I yeah. got to tell you. Kim, women come to me all the time. Jonathan, I know what I want. I know what I want. I know what I want in relationship. Then they go through this proprietary coaching program I created. And can you guess what they say every single time doing this work? I didn't know that what I did what I didn't want. I don't know. 
I, why didn't my parents teach me this? Why didn't I learn this in school? Why didn't I learn this before I married the wrong guy? I'm yeah. going to tell you something. Most women think of it in a uh, nebulous place. It's in the clouds. When you get granular to understand compatibility, this has the capacity to happen. And I'm not criticizing you. I'm just sharing with oh, you. Yeah. I've coached thousands of women and they all say the same thing. You got me thinking. The other thing is it's important to recognize to be relationship ready mm -hmm. is your desire for a relationship exceeds your fear or your past pains, okay? Right. So where are you at with your fear and past pains? I am not in fear anymore okay. of starting a relationship. I'm not in fear of going all in with the person. Mm -hmm and becoming emotional, talking about anything and everything. Um, I'm just, I'm, I'm just ready. And okay. I'm at, the, I'm at that standing point where I'm going to jump, you know, not, you know, with respect, you know, I'm not going to be like, Oh my gosh, I'm going to die without you. Cause I've been on my own for six years now. You know, I've been okay. independent and take care of myself, but, okay. You know, I'm going to be like, I want to share my life with someone. I want okay. to share everything. By the way, Joe Daisy says, girl, you look fantastic. I don't know if you can see that there. I can but, see that. <laughs> Thank uh, you. I want to give you some props. You're very beautiful, Kim. I've been sweating, working out right now. I just okay, got on. No I I, go for it. <laughs> I appreciate your I, bravery. I wanted to, I think you're so cool and I just love all your videos. I watch them every night before bed, even the ones from three and four years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I okay, love so, it. All right. So we want to give you a little bit of advice on Bumble because I'm on Bumble. And okay. let me just share with you one of my biggest frustrations from women from dating sites. Okay. So, so you're, so I don't want you to make the mistakes. If you want a man like a grower builder, like myself, it would be, you may want to take some notes. Okay. So one of the things that frustrates me to no end is when someone on Bumble, as an example, and since women initiate, is when they just simply say hi. Now, I'm sorry, that just bores the fuck out of me. Hi, how's your day? How's your day? I hope you have a good day. First I, off, I don't really like someone to tell me how my day should be. You don't have that right. My mother does that and she doesn't she's not allowed to do that anymore so i invite you to use my nice method n-i-c-e the n stands for name use the person's name in a sentence the i stands for inquisitive ask a question about his profile the c stands for compliment give him a compliment we men get so we we rarely ever get compliments ever I know. I know. And lastly, the E stands for emoji, emotion, energy, or enthusiasm. Put a happy emoji on there. Tell them I'm looking forward to hearing from you with a happy emoji. Create some emotion, some enthusiasm, some excitement. As Natty uh, just wrote here, the nice method, the name, compliment, excuse me, name, inquisitive, compliment, and enthusiasm. I, the other thing that bothers me is um, on Hinge is another site that I'm on. I have eight women I've responded to in the last 10 days. None of them have responded back to me. And they wrote me first. They wrote yeah. me, I responded, and then crickets. It is fucking pissing me off. The level of, of effort. Yeah. I I don't like that either. If I really like somebody, I'm going to actually talk to them. There are so many people out there that are fake, that don't follow through with like, let's talk on the phone. I, I want to actually talk to this person. I want to go, I want to talk. I want to engage, you know, I don't want to do all this ghosting and all that stuff. I'm not, I'm not that type okay. of person. So uh, Ju Julianne, uh, uh, Julianne says, online dating is brutal. Ha ha. And I Debbie think. says, I don't like dating apps. But I want to share something with you that's fascinating. I think this is critically important. So my son the other day, my, my son, there's a picture of him right there. He's 28 Aww. years old. 
And he was on a date with the woman with a woman he met on a dating app. And somehow, and I guess they went out where there were a couple of his her girlfriends out together. So he's in a group of women, and the women said something that fascinated him. And he said, young women today don't meet men organically anymore. They are so used to online dating. They are so used to online dating that they feel they have they need to know the data, like you know, the age, the the location, the height, the profession, all the little, you know, data points that are and, and so women, young women today are very reluctant to meet men organically. And and it occurs to me, we've been now so socialized and younger people are, are rather, rather socially inept in social oh, yeah. settings out, outside. But then it occurred to me, I went to, I went to Trader Joe's today. I went grocery shopping. I have my head down. I'm focused. You know, there was a woman there that for a nanosecond, I, I mean, I go, oh, she's kind of cute, but I'm not going to interrupt her. So this whole belief system, you'll bump into someone at the grocery store, that, that's not even, that's like, that's almost like dumb and dumber when he says, you've got a <laughs> one in a million chance to, to, you know, score with me. And he goes, so you're saying I have a chance, right? Like yeah, meeting yeah. organically is radically rare. We don't know anything about a person when we meet a stranger organically, at least with online dating, we have some data points that we right. can determine some compatibility. But people are poo-pooing and rejecting dating sites, and it still happens to be the number one place people are meeting today for those of us in midlife. It is the number one place by a thousand-fold. In other words, 50, 60% of people are meeting online. Very few people are meeting organically. It's very rare we get fixed up by friends. Um, occasionally, if you're in some sort of social gathering, you will get to meet someone, but that's the exception, not the rule. So my point is, Kim, dating sites are brutal, like uh, Josie said, okay? They are brutal, okay? But there's still the best game in town. Yeah, I mean, that's, I, I've, you know, I've been out there and I've been out shopping and there was a guy on a motorcycle the other day that smiled and waved at me, but that's all it ever amounts to. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know, nobody comes up and says, hey, would you like to go out? And most of my friends are married or they've moved away. You know, they're raising kids or yeah. some of them even have a friend that just now had a baby in 47, you know, like it's all different. So many different yeah. things now. So like, this is why I thought, well, I'm going to try it and see what happens. Okay. Uh, I want to say Debbie Moeller said, Mueller says, uh, guys have contacted me through Facebook Messenger when we are on Facebook chats. By the way, I do want to say Facebook is actually a better way to meet people because usually there's a, a one degree of separation of somebody that you might know. Uh, yeah. Laura goes on to say, I'm always looking around while I shop. Well, looking around doesn't do shit unless you walk up to someone because a man like me, um, you know, is, you know, got his head buried when you're shopping. So it's great that Laura, you're looking around. Um, but are you doing something about it? And just keep in mind, if you did walk up to somebody and there's not an interest, he might be polite, but might not take it anywhere. Right. Well, you know, Kim, I really appreciate your bravery to be on, to share, to listen to my data points, um, to explore this from a different mindset. So do you have any parting questions you have or parting shares? No, just keep up what you're doing. I so enjoy it. I think you're so cool. And I just look forward to it every day, every night, just listening. And I just think it's awesome. Ah, well, thank you. Can I give you, oh, first off, before I forget, if this was valuable to you, I'd love a donation to the Connor Asley Scholarship Fund. I'll post the link right here again for you. Uh, well, um, oh, no, you just hit the little dollar sign in the chat box, okay? Thank you. All right, big hugs, Kim. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Good one. All right. You know what? She was certainly brave to jump on and allow me to pontificate a little bit 
of my love scale. One of the things I was just sharing with her is the know thyself piece. And it sounds to me that she seems to be emotionally grounded. She has a good head on her shoulders. She's taken ownership of her past relationship. She takes ownership on her part. She's coming at this with a positive mindset, almost a beginner's mindset. In other words, not coming at it with such negativity as so many people are experiencing today. So I want to give Kim a big props. If you found value in what I shared with Kim, post a comment below. I'd like to hear your thoughts. If you did find value in it, please hit that like button. Please share this video please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos. Hey, and if you want to connect with me based on what I just shared, schedule a link or there's a link below to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. Join my group called Midlife Love Mastery. Everything's in my show notes below. All right. Thanks again, Kim.